All right, so let's talk about actually throwing a cup. So first of all, we've been throwing with reclaimed clay, right, all this time um, since we started working on the wheel. Now, if you're going to start keeping things, I recommend switching back to your regular clay. That makes sense. Now, if you think you're kind of suck still, need some more time, right, because everybody starts there and everyone progresses at different rates. Right, but if while you were throwing before you were getting things like, oh, maybe I should keep this, then maybe it's time for you to switch over, right, to the your regular bag clay, right, that you, the new clay rather than because as the reclaimed clay has issues, right, it's because it's recycled, it's gone through once before, it's not as good as your regular clay. If you still want to practice, and if you make something out of reclaimed clay, though you happen to make it, that's fine. You just keep it. That makes sense, but it's not as good as your right you'll be a slightly better potter by switching over right that makes sense everybody so if you're thinking you want to keep something switch to your regular clay if you feel like you haven't felt like you kept any wanted to keep anything yet maybe you want to stay with reclaim your choice okay so let me just tear off a chunk so there's my first chunk for making my first thing put that over there pad this in a ball um so hopefully you guys all know you've been starting with two pounds right if you feel like you've been making something that would be a good mug size, keep going at that rate. If they feel like some of the things you're making were too big, cut it down and start with less clay. So normally when I throw and I want to make something like this size for me, I start with like one, one and a quarter pounds. Now that's because I'm super efficient, meaning I know exactly how to throw the clay. I would probably, you would need to start with more clay like two pounds at least probably or one and a half pounds or something that makes sense and then if that thing that you make out of one and a half pounds is too small just increase your clay the amount of clay that you start with that makes sense to everybody so that's trick number one so here we go pound this out into a ball this reclaimed clay is a little bit stiffer than normal you see how i threw it down and it's not even really sticking so the drier clay, the more you got to smash it down before it really gets sticking, right? So let's try it again. Oh, that felt good. But you see how it's still just coming off. So the, if the clay is dry like this, you really got to get it down and really kind of seal it down really good. There we go. I can still feel it shifting around on there. All right, so here we go. So the stiffer the clay, the harder it is to center because Right, centering, you're really trying to hold still against that clay, and as it's pushing you around, you're trying to not be pushed, you, and it takes longer, it's harder to center. Now, the advantage of stiffer clay is that when you start pulling it up into the cylinder, the clay is stronger, and you can make a thinner cylinder. If I have to choose one or the other, easier to center or taller cylinder, I usually pick easier to center because it's just uh, centering is a difficult part to get through. That makes sense. And it takes a lot of effort. So I wet everything down. I'll start my little squeezy squeezy from the side. And I'm having to push a lot harder than normal. So maybe it would be good if you guys went to your normal clay today, your new clay. Because this is actually pretty hard to center. I'm really having to fight, even though it doesn't look like I'm doing much more. Since we were using that soft reclaim clay, that reclaim clay that we've had for the past week has, was really soft, right? And this is a lot harder, even though it doesn't look like I'm actually pushing hard, I'm actually having to really bear down on it. All right, so it feels like it's centered, right? And it doesn't really look like you're, I'm doing much, but you guys know now, right? That I'm doing a lot of different things all at the same time, right? So now we got to think about what sort of thing do I want? this mound the width of this mound determines kind of what kind of cylinder i want right so but let's say the width of your palm or a little bit wider right and just doing that right you see that that's okay and that means i'll get a cup that's about that width of my palm that makes sense the cylinder so wet it down push it down and then you guys will kind of get there oh this bottom is still out of center you see that it's like so i need to go up and down one more time Oop. I'm gonna really crank on it this time. Like really, I could feel it sliding around on the bat a little bit. It's still out of center. So let me show you a trick about fixing out of center, right? This part is always out of the most out of round. So let's bring this in super close for this. 
right? You see that? So what am I going to do here? I'm going to undercut it. So what does that mean, undercut? This is a skill that we're going to learn today. Did I guys show you guys undercut last time? Okay, good. So here I'm going to hold this like a pencil, like this. You see how I'm holding that like a pencil? And you see how that blade part is pointing kind of toward me. You guys see that? Like that. And then I'm going to take the very tip of this and slowly cut down, maybe just straight downward. You see that? So I'm starting to cut down, and I'll cut down all the way to the wheel, holding it straight down, not letting the clay push me around. So if I'm able to hold still as I'm cutting, I should cut a perfect circle. That makes sense, everybody? And as the clay tries to push me away, I try to hold against that, right? The clay will try to push me away, push me away when that part, and then hopefully that makes this perfectly round. That makes sense, I hope. Then I'm gonna come back up here and center again. Oh, so much better, I hope. Maybe I should have wedged this clay up more. We're just gonna go for it. Okay, here we go. Back down again. There we go, and then I'm gonna flatten it out like we did before. Now we're gonna open. So everything's the same mostly except for that. We're gonna open, remember I'm gonna curl my hand over to open. What's going on here? This thing's moving around on me, which it should be. Everything's a little bit back. Okay, so here, go down like this. Right, so keeping that curled over, going down. There we go, relax. So I'll do check the bottom. So bottom thickness, so remember, we're gonna try to keep this is critical now. So I wanna stab it down and see the bottom thickness. We want about the, the tallness of your pinky. You guys see that? For that needle tool thickness, okay? So that's very, 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 very important. So around that area, okay? So now I'm gonna widen, pull straight back, just like we did before. Ooh, there's a hard chunks in here. So I don't think, we, this reclaim clay needs a little bit more time in the mixer. So there, I wanna make sure this area in here is flat. You see that? I want to make sure that this is flat. So, the, but it's never flat, right? It always has like these finger ridges going back. So take your fingers like that, make them flat. Your three fingers on your right hand side, make them flat like that. And then put your sponge in your hand like that. You guys see that? Like that. And then we're going to work on the side of the clay that's spinning away. So let's go top down. So we're going to work on the side of the clay that's spinning away, right? So that side of the clay is spinning away. So I use these three fingers here, I make them flat, and I pinch it in my thumb like that. You see that? And then I'm just going to put that down in there and rub that back and forth like that. You guys see that? So just going back and forth very lightly inside of there. Ooh, so you see now it is looking really flat-ish in there, right? And that's good enough. So now we are going to raise up and throw. Wet the whole thing down, and I'm gonna push here, and we all know this part, right? We're gonna raise it up into the air. Squeeze, 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 and then go wet it down again. We're looking to make sure, remember, that these walls are even from inside and out, right? So this is the same wall thickness all the way down, right? Does that make sense, everybody? So that's super important. Wall thickness from top to bottom here is super important. So here I squeeze again and go up. So this is gonna be a pretty big cup. Right? I could already tell just by how wide it is, right? And remember also, we haven't talked about this, but clay shrinks about 11%, right? So what you wanna do is actually make these a little bit bigger than what you want, and then they'll shrink down to just right. Does that make sense? So 11% is a lot, right? So wet this whole thing down, and I'll raise one more time. There we go, looking pretty good. Oh, I'm so happy now, right? So that's definitely in cup for me, like John Hasegawa, good usable cup. That makes sense? Like I could put stuff in here and that's tall enough now. All right, so now one thing we need to do next is inside, we wanna get out all that water. Why is that important? Because water and clay, if I leave water in there, it's just gonna be soaking up water the whole time and that bottom's gonna get soft. And if it gets soft, it's gonna crack. So get my sponge inside, I just reach inside kind of blindly and get that water out. Here we go. So, and then if I need to, I would 
I maybe I need to wet it down again and dump out, squeeze out my sponge and get all that water out again. So now next thing is, I know we talked a little bit about this last time, but is that we are going to, did we do this where we smooth out the outside a little bit? You take this rib. So I'm gonna take this, one of these ribs, use the curved side and just press it in like that. You see how I'm pushing it in from the outside very lightly going up and I'm using, I'm working on the side of the clay, right? That's spinning away from me, right? And you see how I just swept off all those lines. I could do it a few more times like this. You guys see that? So I'm just making the outside look all smooth and happy. Not really required, but it helps out a little bit. Now, now what are we gonna do? Now we have to think about the shape that we want. So we're gonna make, first of all, a shape like this one here, where we're gonna barrel it out a little bit like that. So how do we do that, John? So all we have to do is take, remember last time we talked a little bit about pushing the shape around with our fingers, right? I took my fingers and went down and inside the cup and push that. Well, you could also do the same thing with your rib. So uh, this rib is a little big, so I'm just gonna take and use this part here. You guys see that? And push this shape out a little bit by reaching way down here and pushing. So I'm working on, once again, the side of the clay that's spinning away, left hand inside. So here, I'm gonna use this part here and I'll point to the outside where I'm pushing here. You see that, how it's starting to make that Oh, look, it's already started to do that, right? Barrel shape. So, and then any clay that comes off soft from the inside, we take that clay and we sweep it off. Then let's do it again. That was really fun, right? So let's push that out again. Now, people get super excited and really start pushing shapes around, right? Because this is like, woo -hoo, I'm having a really good time. And, but if you want to look at all these different shapes, let's just pick one, two, three different shapes, right? And let's talk about these three different cup shapes and what's going on, right? If we hold something straight and vertical against them, you see how, as far as how much they go in and out, it, there isn't that much going in and out, right? Less than an inch or something. So, and so do you see how that one, it's only like this much variation. That makes sense between, the widest point, the narrowest point of the body. That makes sense, everybody? Let's look at another one. Let's look at this one, right? We would never mistake this cup for the first one, right? But if you hold up something straight against there, ooh, it's even less, right? Between the narrowest part and the widest part. So let's look at another, another. ooh, this one's pretty dramatic. Let's look at this one. There's this one, but this one is really, well, let's take a look at it. This one's pretty dramatic, but you see how Let's make that more vertical. You see, not really that much, right? So within this small amount, like less than an inch, right? You get to express everything. As you get more extreme, right? The shape changes to more extremeness, right? That the, that the cups get harder and harder to use. Like, what do you mean, John? What does that mean? So you could make a cup that's a very bowl shape right, just really wide and flare out. But there's a reason why we don't drink out of bowls, why? I mean, you can drink out of bowls, but you wouldn't use it to like drink coffee out of or something, or juice out of normally, right? Right, why is that? It's uncomfortable, yes, but why is it uncomfortable? Other than it's awkward to hold, there's hotness, right? But what, but drinking's a problem. What's the problem when you try to drink out of a bowl? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I always think about it like, you know, when you read the Bible and they talk about Noah and he sat there for a really long time, nothing was going on and the people were making fun of him. And then all of a sudden it started raining and I always think about what that was like and it must have been like <laughs> this flood of things, right? I, I always think John Hasegawa really makes it super dramatic, right? And in my mind, they make it more exciting. So I always think of that. I always think that when you're drinking out of a bowl, it's a little bit like that. You're like nothing, 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 nothing. And then all of a sudden, poof, and then you get this face full of soup or whatever, right? So that's kind of the reason why we don't drink out of bowls is because it's hard to drink out of and manage, right? Because it wants down the side of your face and all that. That's no good. And the reason why we don't drink out of things that are really tapered inward, right? Because it's the opposite 
because it's nothing, 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 and it's a little bit of something, right? And then in order to drink out of those kind of cups, you really got to tip those cups upside down, right? To get them out, get the stuff out, like those anti-spill mugs, right? They're really hard to pour stuff out. So as far as usability goes, generally things that are straight up and down-ish are the way our, whatever we've been trained to easily mentally think about drinking so that we don't have to work too hard at it. That makes sense. So big bowl, we have to manage it and we have to be super careful not to spill everywhere, right? But out of a cylinder, a basic cylinder form, as far as ease of drinking out is probably a lot of ways, in a lot of ways, the easiest to drink out of, right? It doesn't take mental power for us to concentrate on drinking out of that. So you see that as I push this out, the shape and the what it means or what it is to you emotionally or whatever and how it's used and how it has changed a lot. Right, but if you look at this overall shape, there isn't. Look at how much space there is there. There's almost no space. I can't even get my finger in there. Right, but it changes a lot. Little changes mean a lot here. Right, and you think, well, cup. I only get to make a cylinder ish, and then I, right. But a little bit of change means a lot. That you get to express yourself in little changes. That makes sense to everybody. So let's keep pushing this out. So I'm gonna push it out just a little bit more. I like it. What do I call this? I call this like belly, right? This is like your, your Buddha belly area, right? And depending on how much you wanna push it out, right? It gets more and more chubby. And then remember that there are lots of ways that we can think of a belly, right? So we'll just go to human terms, right? So you could think of a very, you know how like younger dudes, when they get a little bit out of shape, they get a little beer belly, right? And they're still kind of young, but they're still a little bit athletic. But as they get older, it may get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you have the people that never took care of themselves, are always sitting around, always eating very badly. And that belly, though, has a weight, right? Has a weight to it, right? Has a right? But then you can also think about a woman that is pregnant, right? And then as she becomes, as the pregnancy moves forward, right? It gets, the belly gets bigger and bigger. But that is a different kind of belliness, right? We would never mistake, right? A eight month pregnant woman's belly for like the, the guy who's never exercised or eats lots of potatoes and mashed potatoes, everything, right? Everything wrong. And that belly kind of hangs, there's different kinds of belly. That makes sense? So think about what you want here, right? and then think about how that form and think, have a vision for that, right? And there's skinny people and there's like different ways people have waistlines and things like that, right? So what am I thinking about here? Like that's not very much, but let's move it out some to give it more oomph, right? So that's what I'm thinking about. I won't tell you what I'm thinking about really, but right, but I'm thinking about that belly this. You're probably thinking, gosh, that's a guy thought a lot about like bellies, right? But I do because I want to think about how that energy hangs over there, right? So like uh, the beer belly, the, the dude, right? That has a really big beer belly, like that beer belly really overhangs, right? And hangs over the belt, like the belt is invisible, right? It's this thing. So, and it's kind of gross, right? So if I want that versus like a, uh, the woman, the pregnancy, beautiful pregnancy belly, those are different things. Right, so I would say, what are we at here? What is that? I don't know, right? But if I wanted like the more beer belly like look, I would have to maybe get in here. Maybe I have to use my hand and really extendo out this area here, right? You see by doing that, just by doing that little bit, where have I done is I've took my finger here and pushed downward here to create more of a bottom heavy thing. Now making like that beer belly thing is hard, right? So let's think about something different, like an eggplant or there's vegetables, right? Where the bottom part of the vegetable is the widest, right? So maybe you think like that. So you see how I move that wider point down? Let's move it down even a little bit more. I'm pushing here with my finger, push, 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 push. Oh, look at that, right? And you see that little change changed a lot about how we feel about the pot change like the center of gravity, right? Does that make sense about it? So it's much more weighty down here where before that the belliness was up higher in the middle, right? The energy was different. All right, so now you notice that I've been pushing out. I haven't really, I've only been pushing out from the inside here and now I have this. It started to form like this, what I would call like a waist here, 
So I can figure out the waist here by, I can take this part and fold it outward. You see how I just folded that outward just a little, right? And so little changes mean a lot. Maybe I could change it even a little bit more. I so said I could wet this area down and maybe I feel like maybe I push that far out, too far out. I could bring that in a little. Yeah, oh, that, I'm very excited about that. I don't know what that is, but I'm super excited. All right, so now how do we finish? Like, oh, I got it, John. I'm getting it. I understand what you're saying, right? So now we, a lot of times our rims aren't perfect, right? They're uneven. So part of it is you need an even rim. So this is the super new, one of the super new things. Uh, so how do we make this rim? So pretend my rim is all mangled up, like, you know, that's my man, my version, right? But sometimes like one hot side's higher, one side's lower. So what you want to do to clean up your rings, you want to take your needle tool in your right hand, hold it like a pencil. So you see I'm holding it like a pencil, right? But now instead of holding it like a pencil, we want to flip it over. So the your palm side is kind of up. You see that? Knuckles down, palm side up. So then what we're going to do here is I'm going to hold it like that. And you see, I'm going to push up again. So everybody pretend they're holding a pencil. Or if you have a needle tool, hold it in your right hand, like, like you're writing, right? So we, most of us write over the top, right? Like this, right? Most of us are writing like that. And then what you want to do, turn it upside down so that like that. Because we want, because like this, the needle tool is kind of pointing downward. We need the needle tool pointing horizontal. So the easiest way to do that is just to rotate that so it's perfectly level. Do you guys see that? So we turn it over. We could try to do that, like tilt it downward, but that's super awkward. So it's just easier and more relaxed, just the rotation over, right? And now what we want to do is we want to take this needle tool and I want to push up against my thumb of my right hand like that, or my left hand like that. So right hand pushing up against left hand and then we'll get super close in for this so you guys can see it we need to trim off that part right up there and don't worry we'll do this again so like this pushing up here you see that then what i want to do is slowly bring this needle tool in let's go a little bit this way so slowly bring this needle tool in so i use this hand to brace on the inside i'm pushing up here and i slowly bring that tip in so what am i doing i'm barely touching that tip to the surface do you guys see that so i barely touch that tip to the surface and I draw a line all the way around. And once I connect that line to all the way around, I push that needle tool in just a smidge more and I, that line gets drawn a little deeper and I push it in a smidge more and it gets drawn a little deeper and drawn a little deeper. It may take you 10 revolutions around by pushing a little bit deeper each time it goes around, deeper, 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 sm by small amounts and then you'll cut all the way through. That makes sense, because if I just try to jam this all the way through at once, it's going to be cutting too much, and my cylinder is going to collapse, right? That makes sense? So I hold steady, stay in my line, right? I'm very watchful. I'm very focused at where this point is going into the clay. Let me clean this up. Let me clean the surface up so you can see it better. Here. So I'm just going to take this rib. I'm going to make a new smooth surface there so you guys can see it. So you guys see that? So, right, I'm going to cut somewhere. You have to cut below the lowest thing so that you're making the cut all the way around. That makes sense? Hold it. Hold this tight. Push up. Push in slowly. So that's scoring. Like scoring a little bit deeper each time. And then you see I cut all the way through by slowly, slowly each revolution. And then I can lift it off and woohoo! Right? You see that? Let me do it one more time so you guys can see it. Hold steady. Push in like this, slowly, 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 slow, and then it comes off. You guys see that? So, uh, so every time you make something, even if you're not going to keep, let's say it just is not looking great, right? Cut the rim off because that we don't want the first time you do that to be your most best thing you've ever made, right? We want the first time you cut something off. I mean, the, when you're cutting off something for something you're pretty sure you want to keep, that you've already done it like three or four times. That makes sense? So that was one. Now, next, next is we need to round this rim off because if you look at that rim, it's all sharp and everything, right? There, and we don't want sharp things. So why is that? If you look at your mouth, and we'll look at myself here. So if you look at your mouth, it's all rounded edges, right? Rounded corner. And if you kind of touch your face, that part, it's all soft and like fleshy. It's like every other, almost every other part of your body is much tougher. Right, and it's a very intimate space, right? And so, what do we do with us? Like, okay, so we eat, right? We go to the dentist. The dentist, we're like super nervous when we go to the dentist. Why? 
is because that dentist person or hygienist is like invading into your personal space, right? This is very, and then we use our mouth to interact with the people we love with, right? The most, right? You don't let people mess with this except there's only like four people, right? Or one person or whatever, right? It's the way how we show that we're closest to that person. That makes sense? So it's very important space. So when I interact with something like a mug, ooh, I'll use my coffee cup, right? I am actually interacting this part here. I'm actually gonna kiss this and drink it. Mm. Right, and I do that without even thinking about it that much, right? That I trust that the person who made this, I made this, has taken care and love and making sure like this isn't gonna cut me or hurt me or anything, right? Because I'm putting it in one of my most intimate space zones, right? And if we think about it, right, there's not too many things around us that we would put in there, right? Right, we wouldn't put just about anything. Even this thing, which I could drink out of, potentially is, we already know that this is a little sharp and it's gross, right? So we're very careful about evaluation, right? Where I have no problem picking this thing up and holding it, right? Or putting it or holding it like, or a lot of different ways, putting my foot in it, right? So the mouth is a very intimate place. So you have to take care and love when dealing with it. So how do we do that? Well, right now it's just cut off, right? It's not been dealt with in the proper way. So it is, like this is really dry because I just cut it off. So I'm gonna take my sponge, which I wet down a little bit. And first of all, I have to re-wet it like that. You see that? And re-wetting while spinning, you could already see that it's rounded off a little bit, but not enough. So that's where these things come in. So we'll back this off for a second. That's where these things come in. So it's a little film canister with a piece of chamois on it, right? And so a chamois is this really soft thing. And you can see that you dip the chamois into the water and let it soak there for a while, okay? And then the film canister doesn't serve any purpose as far as making the tool better and more usable for you, other than the fact that it keeps us from losing these chamois into the clay. Because once this gets full of clay, this part gets full of clay, the chamois, we lose them and they end up in our clay. So the film canister is for us to keep track of. So this is wet, right? And I think this thing is wet. And then what I'm gonna do is flip this up into a loop. So you see that flat, right? I just hold it flat for a second. And then I could take, pinch it between my two fingers and then have it go up. You see that, have it go up into a loop. You guys see that up into a loop? It's hard to do on camera because everything's backwards. There you go. You see that, how it's making that loop up. And then I put that loop down over my rim, left hand on the inside, right hand on the outside, and it's spinning on the right hand side. I push that down and I squeeze inward a little bit. And then just time, just let it do its thing, right? And you can see, oh, you see how round and happy that is. So what is the curvature you're really looking at? So you can think of this curve in two things, half a circle, right? A semicircle is the technical term, right? But, or think about it like as another pair of lips, right? Look at, other, well, you can't look at your lips, but look at other people's lips, how rounded they are. Right? This is like the one part of somebody's bottom lip or upper lip, right? Think about it that way, right? Round, 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 round. So then the next thing we have to do, so everybody, that makes sense to everybody? So you're like kissing something else, make it happiest place. All right, so now down here is the other thing we have to deal with. Because later on, next class, we're gonna trim a foot onto there. Uh, we're gonna trim a foot onto there. You guys, gosh darn it. So you guys see it. So trim a foot onto there, right? You trim some clay, trim some clay. In preparation for that, we are going to undercut this. And so undercut's like a lot like what I showed earlier. Hold this like a pencil again, right? And then we use the very tip. And while the clay is moving, we undercut it like this. You see that? So I go in and I stay in that same line using the tip as I go in all the way down, you see that? Until I reach the, the back. So if you're really watchful, you can see that there's, see how my clay pot is here? You can see a little ring of fatness right there, right, that brown dark spot. And then there's a ring of clay here on the outside. Does that make sense to everybody? So I've actually separated that ring of clay away. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use this thing and I see I use this flat blade and the, cut it underneath like that. And then I turn this blade like that. So why do I wanna turn that blade like that? You see how I turn the blade like that? 
So if I hold this in place like that, if I hold this here, this clay will hit this thing here. This clay will hit this guy here and the clay will kick out and away. So we need to change our camera view so you guys can see that a little better. So here, I'm gonna hold this still very awkwardly and then see how the clay, I'm able to sweep the clay away. Why? Because this thing is tilted like that. You see that? You can see it more from the top view. You see how I turned it like that while I'm holding? So when the clay hits that, this stick, it pushes it out toward the outside. That makes sense? Everybody? Like the way you plow snow or something. Oh, it's hard to do like this. All right, so then that piece of clay comes off. And then I can maybe one more time just sweep underneath really fast. And then since I'm already here, I might as well just clean off the bat, right? And then just do that really quick. And then, so it's on the bat, but cups are really easy to get off. So I, all I need is a wire tool here like this. And I hold tight and I sweep under like that while it's spinning, okay? I'll show you again, hold tight against the wheel, sweep under while it's spinning cut off, and then you're probably thinking, well, John, how do we get it off of there? Oh, I saw a copy in there. All right, so I wanna clean this off really fast. I put it onto a board. So how do I get it onto a board, right? So I have this, and you wanna make sure your hands are kind of dryish, not wettish, because remember, wet hands or wet clay, everything's really slippery. We want to kind of dry our hands off. So how do we do that? We just take our towel, no matter how wet, we just take our towel that's damp, and we can get enough of that stuff off so that we can lift. So how do we lift? What we're gonna, so my board is close by, I have, my hands are dry. What I'm going to do is just kind of like lay hands on this pot really softly like this. So I want maximum contact. My hands are relaxed. I wanna be touching maximum skin contact on my hands like this. I don't wanna crush it. I wanna lift it straight up. You see how I'm lifting it up and I put it on my board. Ooh, baby, right, you see that? And now what am I gonna do with it? I'm gonna let it uh, dry to leather hard for next class. So let's just throw one more, except without so much explanation, right? Oh, rip off a chunk. We're just gonna do a slightly different shape. Let's go, oh, see this clay is just not sticking. Okay, so this reclaimed clay is just too dry. We cleaned it off. So I don't know if that's dry enough. We're gonna try and do this. Hope that stuck it down. Oh, it's stuck, right? Oh, so here we go. So we'll go a little bit faster, right? This time without so much John Hasegawa talking, right? So there and there. So what is the goal? So you, before in the next couple of weeks, you should make four cups and muck. So two with handles, at least two with handles and two without handles, but you can put handles on all of them. That makes sense because handles are harder, especially if you already know that you want handled things a lot, right? A lot of us really use handled things all the time and we don't use the other things that much. Centered, right? So you notice that I'm not talking about what I'm doing because I'm hoping that most of you remember or know already that we're what we're doing here, right? So I'm gonna check the depth, right? So there we go, see the depth is good. So then I wanna widen. So this clay is not good. Don't use the reclaimed clay there. Everyone switch over to their new clay. So if you already got some reclaim and are using it, go ahead and finish, but when you're done, put it in the orange barrel and transition to your regular clay as soon as possible. That makes sense, everybody? So we already got clay, so here we go. Now we're gonna start throwing up. So you can see that the reason why we start with cylinders is because everything kind of starts as kind of a cylinder, right? You see that? So I'm basically throwing a cylinder right now. That makes sense? So that's why we have you practice just cylindering for a little bit. Oh, here we go. So you can see that if I'm not babbling and explaining, things can go much faster, right? So. A really good potter, like someone that's been doing it for like 20 years and knows the material, can get a cup from a ball to a thrown thing and off the wheel in like three or four minutes. Pretty awesome to watch. So I think this is ready, right? So then what do we do next? We go to the bottom and we clean up the inside bottom by taking our thing and going in there and cleaning that out. 
getting all the water out. And then we'll clean up the outside a little bit by taking the rounded side and pushing this in. You can see that my hand already forced something going on there. I'm going to push that back in a little bit. This. All right, so let's try a different sort of thing. So that other one we pushed out, right? Remember that we were pushing it outward from the inside. Let's do this one where we push inward. So I could take this part, right? And maybe I want to make an hourglass thing. So I take this part and I could just push it inward. Hold steady with a constant steady pressure. See how it's starting to get a little bit narrow. Let's do a little bit more harder there. There we go. So you see I'm making more of an hourglass shape. There. Now it's hard to push it in, right? Because clay kind of naturally doesn't want to push in that excitingly, right? It, it resists going back in. So in order to make this more hourglass shape, all I have to do is just push this part out a little, right? Because the way how this goes in is as much about how much this goes out as this part going. Does that make sense? So, so you see how I just push that out a little? Then I can cut off the rim. So let's cut off the rim. Always practice cutting off the rim. Hold this like a pencil. Have it come in. Let's do super close up on this one. Ooh, that's really close up. Right? So I take the needle tool and I slowly push it in over a number of rotations. You see that? Now I'm through and then I lift it up. I don't know if you guys could even see what I was doing there. So practice that every single time, even if you know you're not going to keep it, right? Because you don't want to be the first time to, to be. And then practice getting one of these chamois things and making the loop right over the top like that, right? Push, push, push inside, outside, and then round off the rim. So you saw that I wet the rim down again with the sponge before I did this. Oh, look how round and happy that rim is. Let's get a close-up view of that. You see how round and happy that is, right? Woohoo! Right, and then what you want to do is then undercut the bottom a little bit. That's take, so you'd be able to see this one much better. You see, hold that like a pencil, use the very tip. You see that embracing my hands together, right? Everybody see that, bracing my hands together, and use that very tip to cut through the clay. So I'm down all the way through, and then sweep that clay off. You see that? That little piece of clay comes off. So what will happen? So everyone gets one free John Hasegawa. I'll help you cut off the rim. I'll help you undercut. But I would love it if you tried it by yourself. But if you get to that point, I will help you if you kind of don't remember or screw it. You screwed it up last time and you want my help. That's fine, right? Some of you, when you get to those parts you may not remember, just come get me and I'll help you. That makes sense? And then the last thing is that we do this. So I want you also to do the undercut on everything, even if you're not going to keep it, right? Does that make sense too? Because that's another space where you can screw it up. So I remember I just took the wire, I held it tight, spun my wheel slowly, right? Swooped it under and then I, draw, I just dried off my hands. I want to do the lay the hands on very gently, lots of surface contact, and I lift it away. Do you guys have any questions about that? So as always, make more than what you think you need, right? So people always wonder, John, how do I get an A? Or I want to do really well in the class. Make more, right? So really six, make, have six cups to turn in at the end, right? Or have eight cups to turn in at the end of the term. And that means pretty much that you'll get an A because your first four are gonna kind of suck. Your first one or two are gonna kind of suck really normally because we still got to learn how to put on handles. We might screw that up. You still got to trim. You might screw that up. So just like anything we do in the class, you know, just like history class, you only have to turn in one paper. Back when I was a kid, you just turned the paper in. No rough draft, no nothing, just turned it in. Now they make you turn in rough drafts, an outline, blah, blah, blah. Those are really different versions of your paper, right? They're making you do the paper like three or four times. That's kind of what this is too. Make more. And those early ones are like your rough drafts, and then your later ones will be awesomer. That makes sense to everybody? All right, so go for it. Start making things, four of them.